Hey everyone, welcome to Archer's Garage, and this time we've got a nice Toro, another Toro, but this one I think is going to work out. We do have to check it out. I can tell you it's in nice shape, and it's not in great shape. It needs some stuff. A couple of quick things I can tell you. It needs cables, okay? We have cables. We just took cables off of that other junker. Um, this is a Kami, so it's a Takami motor. Um, interestingly enough, the top is in good shape, but... The pull starter is like mangled. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it's mangled. So I have another one. So we're going to grab the cord out of that and throw out the junk. Okay, it's mangled. The whole thing's mangled. I'm going to grab this. Um, these back wheels, right? We have the other, the others, and they're a little different. I don't know if they'll fit on the same. We'll find out. But these are broken. So the plastic's broken. It looks like somebody tossed this thing so we're going to replace the back wheels if i don't if i don't have the correct high wheel for this design then we'll use these wheels here now these are the new style wheels they look like they're basically the same right so maybe we'll use this one's good but the other one's broken so if i don't have the correct ones we'll use these guys but we want to see if we have correct first okay might just need one you know, so if we only need one, these wheels look good. We got to get and check the gears, and we got to go over the motor. The body is in really nice shape. Maybe a little cleaning and a little clear coat. Who knows? Maybe not even. We'll see when we're done. Let's get it apart. Let's get started on it. I'm gonna start doing my thing to it. Uh, liberate this. Throw out the junk. Pull the carburetor. Do a compression test. Check for spark. And did I go in here? No, I don't think I went into this carburetor yet. So. We'll do all of that and we'll be back in a bit. Get it! Look at the plug. All right, look how clean that is. All right, there's no carbon here. It's just on the center electrode with some water or whatever. All right, so let's let's get to the next step. I gotta get some water in there. I just did a little bit and it was puking a little. Okay? All right, we gotta get that out. Oh, look at all the puke in there. Oh. Look at that. Oh, somebody's got to change their diaper. There's all kinds of smuts in here. That, oh, man. That's nasty. I know it was leaking something from here. It's in the exhaust, too. We got to take that out. We can check for spark real quick. Let's just see real quick if it has spark. I got the bail pull back. Actually, it has one good cable. That's good, right? Oh, we got spark. Yeah, All right. I got my work cut out for me. We got to rinse that out. We can't leave that in there. It's, it's locked up. So I usually take off the muffler anyway to take off the carburetor because of the way I like to take it off. I don't break. It's just easier for me. And then I can service the muffler and clean it up. So let me do that. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, let's give this thing a quick test before I start chasing myself around. I got the gauge, right? Let me spin it up. I'll read it out to you. Oh, boy. There's a lot of junk in there. Uh-oh. There's still too much stuff in there. We're already at 50 pounds. Yeah, no, there's still too much junk in there. Um, it's, built, it's, gonna be, it's because it's building so much pressure. It's already at 50 so and I spun it a lot but yeah this this is fine there's plenty of compression in here now we also need to get the oil out of here at some point I want to paint it so let me take this black bracket off if I had spun it up any faster it would have easily made a hundred pounds I feel so I'm not uh, concerned about the compression on it now and like I said it's really a nice shape I, this thing was like new. Wait till you see the underside of it. And we're just going to get a coat of silver on this, a high temp. And I'm going to put a coat. I want to clean this off a little bit more and put a little silver on the muffler. And um, we'll wash that out because it's full of oil. So I've been letting it drain. And I did the blade and everything before I stopped for the weekend or Sunday, Saturday I did this. So this is all dry, ready to go on. Nice blade. I picked like an almost brand new one. I sharpened it, balanced it. Be back in a bit. 
A few moments later. Well, you know, you have to put a lot on. We're just freshening it. Turns out, I just realized that's broken too. So this thing took a hit. It could have been like a factory, you know, like a, not, not a factory thing, um, like a, a retailer didn't sell it or something went wrong, a customer returned it, whatever it was. And sometimes they have to destroy these things a little bit. They just hit them with a hammer or something light and then they chuck them. So it could have been one of those. That doesn't take long to dry. This stuff, this is my favorite, the Rust-Oleum High Heat. I put it on the mufflers too, 2000 degree. And it actually is really good. I've been using this stuff for a long time. I've actually tried like VHT and all these other coatings. This stuff is inexpensive and it just works. It works really well. Be back in a bit. All right, let's take it off. Just look at the linkages. Hmm. In there, one, two, to the top, spring. Mmm. Okay, let's clean it up. All right, I'm not going to do an overhead view or anything because we're just going to do a quickie on it. So the other day we went in here and we gave it a, a good basic wash. Um, just a couple of more things. I just, I don't remember exactly. I could watch the video. I don't remember exactly. I know I didn't really poke the main jet out. Uh, let's get in here and just kind of, this is the emulsion tube. All right, we're, I don't recommend trying to take it out right, if you don't have to. This wasn't that bad. If we have to come back in and do it again, we'll take it out, but... Um, they do come out on these. They're plastic. You have to take this off to do it. Everything else looks pretty good. I don't really see any issues. So I'm just going to blow a little bit of gum out down through that. A little bit of gum out in through the idle jet. And a little bit in the primer tube. Okay. And the vent tube and then low pressure air like about 30 40 psi and i always say you know blow blow away from your table because there's all kinds of stuff on the table all right that's clean enough for now right i think we'll be okay there <clears throat> now i do see some gook not a lot i had this soaking in a little bit of acid for a little bit Okay, let's grab our Scotch Bright. Give it a twist. Now the main jet. Now I like to drill them out because I'm here at sea level for a couple of reasons. I'm here at sea level, and so these are generally set up for be car epa compliant california restrictions <clears throat> then the motors get older and i'm here at sea level so we're going to have the maximum amount of air pressure so they tend to run lean and especially with a little bit of, i add a little bit of oxidation and yeah so i just took this out to 26 thousandths and that's probably where it was because i didn't really feel it cut anything i think it's just Whatever gook is in there. We'll go one more. This is 28. Yeah, 28. Okay, that one is actually cutting a little bit. Max here is about 2930, I find, for most engines that are on the five horsepower range. Right, that actually removed a little bit. Yeah, that's good. You can get these drill kits now on Amazon. I mean, when I got these, though, they were hard to find. 
Machine supply. That was where I got mine. A different story back then. All right, so that jet's done. Now we have one more jet. We just want to check. But just so you can see how clean it is. I don't know how well you're going to see because I don't have all the lights on. But it's clean. And this is the idle jet. It's got a very small hole in the center. It, it looks clean. Just going to see if I can make sure that there's nothing stuck in that hole. So this is 21. Probably too big. Yeah. Oh, there's the air compressor. All right, bear with me, guys. We'll go even finer. Yeah, 13 fits. Let's try 14. There's nothing in there. Generally isn't. This thing, this is how clean it came out, so. Yeah, you're okay. I'm sticking the back end in, not the twisty side, but the shank side. All right, now we'll assemble. Let me put this stuff away. All right, we're all set. Now, just to make life a little easier, <clears throat> make sure that this is clean. I usually just run my fingernail over it. This one's in pretty good shape. So, this is nice. <clears throat> like I was saying, everything is good. Just dirty. It fits nice and tight. All right, so that we assemble everything. I just like to do this, just sweeten all the seals up and everything, get it all, my two-stroke with the training fluid in it. Get it all nice and sweet. And let's make sure this is clean. I think we've already cleaned all of this. Check the, the seat down there. Looks like it's okay. The seats in this one are the down in. Okay, I like, to, I like to put the gasket down first, but you don't have to. All right, so we're good there. All right, the flat goes to the fulcrum to the back. A little sweetener on it. Now, if you want to check, by the way, all right, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but we're going to check it. But hold this up parallel, you want to look to see that this is roughly parallel to the gasket surface. At the top of the flow, that the flow is sitting basically parallel to here. But we're going to blow test it in a minute. Let me let me put the top on first. I'm just going to do a quick blow test, a cursory check. This all looks very good. Now these are nice engines. You know, I know some people don't like them, but I don't, I don't know why. Right? They they I like them because they come off the rusty machines. The bolts don't break. Unlike Briggs. And these carburetors sit a little low, you know, so they tend to get cooled up. But so does every carburetor. They have nice primers on them. So we're going to grab the fuel hose, which is already blowed out. On this end, there's a little gasket. Um, excuse me, that gas filter. It's in here, right? So this is the tank end. So let's just make sure that's blowed out, just in case. Because I don't remember everything that I did the other day. <clears throat> so we're going to test it. So this side is the carburetor side. So we could put that on. All right, we'll put the clamp on in a minute. But let's just test it. Now, okay, it flows. It blew into it. All right, now let's see if it locks up. Yep, okay, so there's no... So with it upside down... It's the weight of gravity in the float is going to seat the needle. And if the needle is seated, when you blow into it, nothing's going to go. When you turn it the other way, it'll flow, right? So we're fine there. <clears throat> let's just put our clamp up. And let's go over to the other table and install it. A few moments later. All right, let's pop this on. Now, 
I'm going to actually make a, a little like five minute video of this just to show you. But this piece here goes on the bottom. The one with the spring. And the throttle goes on the top. Now, in this case, the gasket was good, but when I sprayed with the uh, silver, I used, I, I coated in here heavy because that actually helps seal gaskets. Um, paint does, uh, engine paint and stuff. So that's a trick. Uh, we even used to use high temp engine paint uh, for, on, on like copper steel shim gaskets for Chevy 350s and high performance engines. I put a little bit of high temp, uh, Excuse me, I'm, I'm like, not right, diabetes. Put a little bit of no C's on the threads. So I just wanted to show you that. Look back at this video, and I have some footage of showing the arrangement. Um, does it really matter? Not really. One could question... Uh, the factory anyway, right? One could say, oh, the factory didn't always do it right. You know, well, that could be true. But this is factory. Let's tighten it. It is a number two screwdriver. All right, if you want to, you could put a... I don't really like RTV on something like this. If you want to sweeten a gasket up, you could use uh, a little Gorilla Snot. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the muffler, the muffler. I'm going to put a little bit of, um, this. there's no gasket on this one. I suppose you could put one on if you want. Put a little bit of no C's. I usually like to start threads by hand. All right, let me tighten that up. We're going to clean the magneto, so we're going to whiz that in a minute. I'm just going to use the whiz bang cookie. All right, that's not a cutting disc. The one with the abrasive on it is, so if it's really bad, use the abrasive. Don't forget, we got to do this too, because I got a little paint on it, but I do it anyway because we want good grounds. These cookies are abrasive, but they're non destructive. Kinda, right? They're way less destructive than the actual abrasive wheel, the cutting wheel. Because um, that's got like aluminum oxides. All right, so we're done with that, guys. Uh, let me go clean up the armature on the wire wheel and we'll bring that, wipe it off, clean it off, and uh, and I'll be back and we'll mount it 10 thousandths. All right, I'll show you that and we'll go through that. We'll be back in a minute. It's pretty naggy, right? See, the grounds are getting beat, and that too, we want to get that cleaned off. And always peek in there. This one's good, but always look in there. All right, now just to sweeten everything up, all right, put a little white grease on. It'll keep them from rusting right away, but that's optional if you don't want to do that. I clean these in like an oil bath and my solvent. I make sure they're nice and clean after I wire wheel them. Uh, but probably more important is that get some grease or oil on these threads. We want to make sure that this gets tight. But <clears throat> um, we want to feel these threads because we don't want to strip that, right? If you strip in here, you, you're screwed, you know, you ruin the whole job. All right, so in this one, okay, uh, this is up. Sometimes they tell you, but the tang is down. On a lot of machines, the tang goes down. So I've cleaned the connector. I've cleaned everything else up. <clears throat> so when I put these in, I get them down snug. I'm not trying to get a really good camera angle here because again, this is this is a quickie build, more of a quickie build. Let's just snug these up. <clears throat> So that, just snug, finger tight, so that when we turn the magnet over to here, we're not going to pull in the, the armature. Now, we're just going to lay our 10,000s in. 
loosen up the bolts till the magnet sucks in the armature. Let's make sure it's straddled. You know, so we're straddling the magnet with the armature. <clears throat> now we'll tighten them. Now, this is a nice nut driver, so you could leave it like that, but I like to, because it's laminates, right, they have to squeeze together again, and this one's in nice shape, so, and, and the oil actually helps that to happen. I'll use a stubby, a little bit at a time until I feel like they're tight. All right, and if you do this by hand, get used to, don't ever use like a power tool on this. A little bit at a time, give them a minute. That's good. That's good. Done. All right, let me get my tool back, my fuel gauge, brass, 10 thousandths. All right, we're done here. Um, <clears throat> I have to find a top for it. We got the plug. The plug came out like mint. All right, this plug is like mint. Right, We don't even need to clean that. I'm just going to gap check it. All right, if we want, I can blow, blow that out a little bit just to get any of the carbon off of it. But dude, that thing was mint. So we'll do that. We'll put the plug back in. I'm going to find a top for it. I have the dipstick and the pull cord and everything. I have something downstairs. I'm going to go find it in my stash. Because remember, this was damaged. This is all borked and beat up. So we'll do that. Once I get the top on, the gas tank has already been cleaned out. I did that the other day. And I remind you guys again, um, I wash this out. I leave it set. I blow it with air, compressed air. Uh, if you're in a rush, put a little alcohol in it. Switch it around. Blow it again. Make sure the vent tubes or the vent... Cyst caps, sometimes they're tubes, some engines have a little tube or whatever. The vent system's got to be clear. Always clean the cap. One, you don't want to reintroduce debris. And two, it could be spider webs and stuff up in here. And what will happen is, is you'll create a vacuum. The motor will run for a little bit and then it'll stop. And you'll be like, oh, what's wrong with it? All right, I'll be back in a minute. Take some oil. Put it in the top here where this bearing is. And then a little bit in these guys here down in there and also a little bit in now if you don't want to use oil um, my favorite thing to use now is chain wax because it goes in like a liquid pull it because they get stuck and then it waxes up so you get that penetration is it penetration also get some here where the poles are but a lot of this and I like to put it a whole bunch in underneath the spring pocket here with the spring clips on now for the most part this doesn't get that dirty once the covers on and everything but you got to get them something lubed up somehow it's a it's a trade-off because they don't want to work now they the stuff needs service it gets tired so chain wax is a a good alternative i'm going to be using that a lot more all right so get some no c's on all the bolts especially the small bolts in the front they get jammed right they use these little bolts in the front and they break that's why i didn't want to take this bracket off because because of that i could feel it it was getting stuck it moved a little bit just to back it off its seat, and then it got stuck. I a lot of these break. Now you could drill it out, but then you're going to need hardware if you don't have that, and you're going to have to drill it, and you're going to have to tap it. So if you want to be able to take these tops off, the worst ones are the bolts that go hold the top on. They they're down in that recess, that long tube recess, and boy, they get jammed in there. I've had to destroy tops just to really nice plastic tops just to get get at the engine. That's not a happy moment because these tops, the plastic covers break. And uh, boy, when you have to break one that's in nice shape. So I use anti seize. All right, let me finish this up. Don't cross anything, cross thread anything. Put it on by hand, and then we'll hang the tank. Meanwhile, here yeah, it's mint. Still has some of the factory grease on it. People say, Dry lube, right? That's, 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 dry lube is greasy, okay? It's, it's greasy. So, it looks good here. So, what we're going to put on it is some chain wax. I mean, dry lube is not like, you know, powdering your bum. 
we want to get it we'll get it down the chain loop down into the adjuster too so that it moves down up in here and again I like it because it goes in you know like a liquid and you know 15 20 minutes from now I mean, this is already greased up so we'll put a little bit of chain lube on that just a little and we're done all right we'll wipe off the front later all right i'm gonna do the other one i already did the the um cable I found a good old cable in stock and I like to lube them up, put some, you know, good lubrication on a cable, slide it back and forth, wipe it off, put a little chain lube if you want on air chain wax, keep sliding it back and forth, you know, wipe off any of the dirt or if there's any rust, just make sure it's not, watch your fingers because if there's any fraying, throw it out, but uh, you don't want to get stuck with one of those, that could be tetanus. And I like to finish up with white grease, so, and the adjustment up to, is at, uh, at the top, and I just make sure there's no slack and start from there. So, so this is done. All right. I'm going to do the other side. All right. Also, make sure the adjusters work well. Bring them through their arc. I like to adjust them all the way up. It just sucks less grass and dirt when I'm testing it. And it's just a good starting point. So I'm second to highest. This is the garbage one. I'm going to throw that out. And let me do the other, let me do all the adjusters, and I got to find a replacement wheel um, or wheels, and make sure they're all lubed. And then we'll go test it, and then we can come back up for bring it back up for the final. So we'll be back in a bit. Now, now you see what I'm saying? Look at that, it's mint. Okay, so this one you could replace it. All right, is this one different? Yeah, look at that. This one's actually different. All right, so let's just leave it. This one's different. Isn't that weird? All right, so let's keep this one around. Um, this actually had, the bolt actually had a little bit of factory anti-seize on it. That's what I'm saying. This one is beautiful. I got a really nice blade for it. It is used, but it's like mint. All right, so let's put that on. You said check the balance on it and everything. I make sure that they're at least static balanced. And I've had issues where... I've just, you know, you hang a nail on the wall, right? But I've had issues where machines, they were vibrating, and I check them with the nail on the wall. I could not get the blades to balance up. Um, this one I had to put a little extra little chick in it with the grinder here just to sweeten the balance up a little. And like I said, I've had ones where you can't get the balance right, and believe me, you, they will vibrate. You could, I've drilled and done all kinds of things. Sometimes it's not worth it. Get another blade. Now, you could just tighten this. But I'm going to use my impact on the lowest setting because that's more than enough. This is a 500 foot pounder impact, but it's different. Like, you can't really go by that. So, the lowest setting should be fine because it's not just, it's impacting. So, it's not really a torque reading. Done. Okay. Now, while we're underneath here, You guys, you can use oil, but uh, I like chain wax. All right, let's get some chain wax. I like it because it goes up and under and gets in, and then it'll wax up. So you won't get all that buildup. We're going to have to flip it to get to the other side, which we'll do. When you flip, and I don't mind flipping these things around like this, especially before there's fuel in them, right? Once there's fuel in them, it's a bit more of a problem. But this is how I like to work. I don't want to be jacking it and trying to sneak my hands underneath. That's why I like these long tables where I can prop them up this way. It's so much easier for me to deal with and I can do an easier, a nicer job in an easy way. I don't like working on those little tables. You can't do this. And then you're like, all right, well, we'll bring it down. Well, then you're up and down, you're up and down and then you're on your knees again, which, you know, I don't want to do that. All right, so now we can basically fire it and test it. I got to pull the oil out of it, 
And so we'll do that next. Moments later. All right, see what it does. You ready? Back in a bit. More moments later. Perfect. Even the brake works well. All right, it's excellent. Let's bring it in and do the finish on it now. This way it's doing its thing. It's smoking off whatever gook was on there, but I got a lot of it out. 